So this, ladies and gentlemen, is officially the last time we're meeting this year. Yes, and me, the Bombay Chef Varun Namdar, wishing all of you across the globe a merry and chuffed Christmas. Well, my Christmas party officially every year begins on the 24th eve and goes up straight till the 5th or 6th of January because my friends and family just keep dropping in. And what I keep making is food, food and food. Well, today for all of you, I have a very special recipe. This one is a Moroccan spiced chicken. Let's begin. While I'm showing you today how to make a Moroccan spiced chicken, you can of course use any variety of poultry. When I say poultry, I mean chicken, uh, quail, turkey, duck, well anything and everything works perfectly well. The only thing is the cooking time or the cooking technique in a lot of ways kind of changes. So while I'm using an entire bird, you can remove the spine, you can cut it off and you can spatchcock it. You can cut it into a half, you can curry cut it. Let's begin with the marination. Sweet paprika. Little more, that's completely personal. To this, I'm going to add in coriander seed powder. Adding in some chili flakes. Moving on to roasted cumin powder. Any herb of your choice. Now, while you can use oregano, you can use rosemary, you can use thyme, you can use a combination of herbs. What I'm using is thyme, which is dried. Of course, by all means, if you can lay your hands on fresh thyme, absolutely nothing like it. What I'm doing is taking a little bit on my palm and crushing it slightly so that the flavors kind of open up. Let's add in the thyme, which is now crushed. Salt as required. Well, a little more salt because of course, it's an entire bird and you have to have it well salted. Let's rub this nicely. What's important is to ensure that the dry rub kind of is rubbed literally everywhere in the gashes, in the pockets, under the wings and things like that. It has to be perfectly marinated and that's very important. The next step is to keep this marinated. Now you can choose to make this a night before Keep it overnight, refrigerated, or even if you have a little lesser time at hand, it's absolutely fine because eventually it's going to get roasted and also it's going to get stewed at the same time. It's a very tricky thing, but I'll show you how to make it very easy. But what's important is to marinate this wonderfully well and also rest this. Marinate this for at least 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes and the chicken is marinated. Now we need to figure out a way in which we can perfume the cavity because that is also one of the places, of course, we've rubbed in the marination perfectly well, but still, let's take it to another level. And this is how I have learned in Kuwait. It's very simple. What we need to do is we need to use a combination of lemon and mint to kind of ward off this smell. So the first thing is to stuff this cavity with a bunch of mint. But it's important to stuff this cavity with like a little bundle here. So this is how we're going to bundle this and push this straight within. If you know by property, it's a leaf and this leaf is going to shrivel and shrink and that's where you get a little more of the cavity. The next step is to stuff this with a whole lemon. When I say whole lemon, of course, the size needs to be large, but not as large as much as it kind of blocks the cavity. This needs to go within, but perfume will only come in when we either poke this dock this or we cut this or give it a few gashes. What I'm going to do is take a fork and just puncture it like so. Well, as simple as this. We'll do this in seven, eight places. Now, what happens in this case is, now that you've seen this very closely, this of course starts dripping. Of course, if you see, it's beautifully dripping. It's nice and juicy. Also, the outside or the exterior, you have a rind all the essential oils or all your resins kind of get excited and that's how the cavity starts getting perfumed. Well, eventually, of course, if it gets a little saucy while roasting, um, you can just squeeze in the lemon and that's where you get a lemon juice. Again, an accompaniment for this roast chicken. Now, we're gonna squeeze this lightly, like so. Just ensure that it's soft now. You can use a black lemon, by the way. You can use kaffir lime. Kaffir lime, of course, will give you a little bit of a uh, Southeast Asian kind of a flavor, but black lemons, which you get in Arabic markets or Arabic stores, uh, extensively available all through the Gulf and Emirates. Stuff that one in and you're sorted for life. Let's stuff this into the cavity. You don't need to stitch it, sew it or anything. This is just perfect. If it falls off, push it back. As simple as that. 
Now the next step is very simple and that is cooking this or roasting this. Now this can be done in several ways. You can do this on an open flame, you can do this in an electric oven, you can do this in a tandoor, you can do this in a microwave oven or a convection oven, you can also do this in a pan. Now I've shown you all these ways in the past but today's is going to be slightly different. Let's see how. I'm going to begin this recipe with a neutral flavored oil. Now you can use canola, you can use vegetables, sunflower, safflower, anything is just perfect. Don't go overboard with oil. Well, this is like one eighth cup of oil. So while this oil in the pan, just ensure that the pan is universally hot on all the sides. And the next step is very simple. You take the entire marinated bird and place this very gently. What I'm using for this is a flipper and a slotted spoon. Now this is going to make it very easy because all you do is take the support of one and flip it with the other. Let's see how. Well, you can turn it completely or just keep it held on one side and cook the bottom on high flame. Well, if you see the exterior of the chicken, it has to be crusty, it has to be golden brown and not burned because eventually we're also going to add in water in this and then cook it further down. That's very important. Well, like I said earlier, if this lemon kind of just rolls out, push it back in the cavity. Once this is flipped and turned on all the sides and it gets that beautiful crust and golden color, we'll add in water. Now one last and final ingredient and that is garlic paste. Now this again is very important because the water will now get perfumed with lemon, with all the spices, with mint and with garlic. Well in case you have your hands on dried garlic powder. By all means, use that in the dry rub. Give this water with the roast chicken a light jiggle like so. Once the water is jiggled well, we allow this to boil. We allow this to actually come to a roll boil, after which we cover this and cook it on high flame for 10 minutes. Of course, I'll tell you the cooking time further, but 10 minutes high flame to begin with. It's been 10 minutes and the chicken is now literally cooking on a roll boil. This is the time when we lower the flame. And if you see it closely, what happens is the water of course rises on top, it condenses, it rolls back in the cooking pot itself. On low flame, you continue cooking this for 40 minutes. 40 minutes is the cooking time for something like this. And that's when you have the most succulent, juicy, yet roasted Moroccan spiced chicken on the outside. It's been 40 minutes, let's have a quick check. Let's pull the chicken on one side and this is categorically done so that it can be basted with its own roast jus. Now what happens in this case is that the water of course starts evaporating which converts into a nice and sticky jus. The oil that was initially used now gets clubbed with the chicken fat and that is going to get used for basting. Isn't that interesting? And with this, off goes the flame. What's important to know here is, especially when you have a whole bird that you're cooking, whether you're baking or cooking or roasting or anything like that, what happens is the meat literally leaves the bone and that is a sign that the bird is perfectly well done. Well, in case you have your temperature probes and things like that, you can insert it and also know the doneness of the bird. Allow this to settle for 15 minutes so that it just kind of rests, after which this trade goes on the serving board. But before this gets served, we need to remove the mint and the lemon from the cavity. Let's do that. So the mint has become absolutely mushy. It's also kind of flavored the chicken cavity, not only from inside, but also from the outside. 
Now, if I can quickly draw your attention to this lemon, which has wonderfully cooked. It's become squishy. It's become almost jam-like from within. What this has done in the recipe is it has actually not gotten um, the lemony notes. It has gotten the flavor, the essence of a beautiful, fragrant lemon. It has got the flavor of the rind, of the oleo raisins, of the natural aromatic essences from the lemon into this recipe. And that's where this has become fragrant and perfumed and not sour. Remember that. Time to pick this up and place this on the serving platter. We're going to top this up with the chicken fat, oil and the juice. Well, this not only brings in the shine in the recipe, but it also adds in that wonderful flavor note. Let's place the lemon as well. And finally, a bunch of fresh mint. With this, your Moroccan spiced chicken is done and ready. And trust me, this Christmas or any party ahead, this is going to be a party starter. Well, this officially, like I said, was the last episode for the year. But next year, you have a surprise to begin with. Bye for now.